today I'm making it special. Look at all the flowers. It's almost spring. Well, I'm sure it's spring where you live, but here. Sun is out. A little bit of snow. It's almost all melted. Except from that, it's a nice, beautiful day. So, I wanted to give you a little update on whatever's going on. Right now, we put uh, IVF on hold while we wait for the lot to change, while we wait for my treatment to work. So, we are just trying to have a little more fun together. So, we're going to go maybe for Linton. Or maybe go camping this summer. I don't know. We're just going to find a way to just have a little bit of togetherness without the grieving in between us. So I think that we did that before, but it, it wasn't like this right now. Because right now it feels like it is a break because we have to put everything on hold. So we don't have to think about the next plan or whatever because right now we're just waiting to see if my preventive treatment is working. I've been puking all week um, and it's not because I'm pregnant. can't happen on its own. We need a doctor. Uh, no miracle baby here. Won't happen that way. But um, so I had to stop the treatment. I have a next uh, biopsy in like um, two weeks from now uh, to see uh, if it's getting worse, because it feels like it, because then again, I don't know what's going on inside my body, and I've read a lot on support groups with girls who've been through it, that the preventive treatment usually doesn't work, but it helps, but not as much as it should, so I'm trying not to be negative, I'm trying to be po positive, but I don't want to be in denial, like, as much as I want to focus on positive stuff I don't feel like it's healthy to not think about the options that I have in the future so for me I'm all about being open about what could happen but I want to still say to myself that look we don't know yet we know that it's precancerous so we know that it's uh, self that uh, haven't hit puberty yet that eventually, eventually could lead to cancer because they're in that direction right now. But, like, I don't want to think too much about it. But, like I said, I don't want to be denial either. I don't want to be one of those who, oh, it's no big deal. Uh, it's nothing serious because they told me it was pretty serious. And considering my age, uh, they say that it's worse when you're younger because the cells, uh, they devolved quicker into whatever it's supposed to be so that's why they want to check and make sure that everything is not as bad as we think it is so as for that I'm just enjoying a day at a time and I'm not thinking about the words I'm not crying or grieving whatnot like the only thing that I have right now in my brain is I'm happy to work I've got a job I'm happy and I'm blessed because it's perfect job for my health conditions and they're sweet uh, I love my bosses they're, they're like the best ever and uh, I know I'm not going to change jobs like I wouldn't I will never find a job that is perfect for my health condition and that is the perfect one so I will never let that one go as much as I was starting to get used to the fact that I was going to stay at home uh, when my doctor told me it was either find a desk job or stay at home and stay um, on sick leave forever. I wanted to try and see if I could do it and it just happened that yes, it's painful uh, when I get home uh, more, more than I thought it'd be. I thought I would get adapted to it. I thought it would be less eventually, but no, it's just, but you know, for me, I can manage my pain, but I can't manage my brain going nuts staying at home, though. So for me, it's better that way. Um, uh, usually what I did when I was on sick leave, uh, I would always like find a weekend and 
babysit my nephews one at a time and had a little private intimate moment with my nephews and nieces so that I was able to have like each individual individual moments with their aunts and uncle without uh sharing with their siblings because they're having my sisters they have four kids each so it's big families so I want to have that that moment and right now with my health uh, after work um I don't have a lot of energy so what I usually do I don't do anything on the weekends I stay at home I cook I clean and that's pretty much it the rest of the day I'm trying to sleep get some rest because the body is feeling weak but then again I know that um I still want to continue that so I'm going to try to find a way to actually continue doing what I did with my nieces and my nephews without putting as much on my health so that way I can go back to work and not feel as if it is intense, but too much of a weekend. Because what I usually did with my nieces and nephews, it was crafts and whole weekend and then movies, candies, and we go out, we go play. It was a fun weekend. So a lot of energy for me to be in that weekend. But then I told myself I would sleep during the week, so it'd be all right. But now I gotta find a way to minimize a little bit maybe the crafts i don't know maybe i'm gonna find something else maybe since it's gonna be sunny eventually summer maybe it'd be easier if i i bring them to camping maybe that would be less um dramatic for my health i don't know i'm gonna figure it out right now i'm just trying to figure out how to adapt even more to what's going on because with puking all the time i don't want to bring that on to my nieces and my nephews babysitting them um I don't want them to see that side of me. I've never wanted to put that side of, of uh, my health onto anyone else. I know my boyfriend sees it all the time. And just seeing him worrying about me, like I don't want to put that burden on anyone else, especially not kids. I don't want to ruin their weekends with me. I'm going to try to find a way to balance everything so that way it's not too much on my health and they still enjoy the weekend with me. As for the rest, of, um... Our friend uh, gave birth, a um, sweet little girl. Uh, I haven't seen her yet. I saw a few pictures online, but I haven't seen her. Uh, my boyfriend did. No. Yeah, he did. Um, it's not that I, was re I wasn't ready. Uh, with them, they're the couple that has been the sweetest ever when they told us that they were pregnant. They took us... Um, and like they wanted to be alone with us when they told us and they, they made sure that we were all right and as much as they were happy for themselves they had a lot of empathy for what we were going through so i feel like with them it's easier to be there and happy for them because they're sensitive to us you know it's easier to be around some friends who aren't as selfish and what's going on in their lives so so yeah so I didn't see them yet, but we're really happy for them. So I'm happy to see them sooner rather than later. I know usually when I had friends who gave birth, I wasn't really excited to see them because as much as they're happy for themselves, they have no empathy for what we are going through. And that's all right, you know, to each their own. Like sometimes that you're so focused on what's going on in your life that you, you forget what's going on around you, you know. And that's all right because when you have kids, sometimes it's hard to focus on something else. And I appreciate the ones that can focus on something else um i know it's really exciting to be a mom i've been there um but i don't know maybe it's how i am i've always viewed myself like as much as i had a, a family back in the days i had it with my son i've never uh was so absorbed with the family unit i always wanted to be there for my son so it just made me a different mentality it's all right there's nothing wrong with that but it's easier for me to be around those who have more empathy more sensitivity for what we're going through so yeah so that's pretty much it for now i'm trying to be positive i am positive sometimes there's low sometimes there are ups and downs like always and i don't think i'm gonna get through that you know i've always told myself i'm gonna try to find a way to be balanced in whatever's going on in my life uh, and I wanted to be zen, I wanted to be at peace, and to be at peace with whatever's going on. But I don't think that is 
possible. As much as I'm willing to try anything to stick positive, there's always going to be some dark days. So I want to make sure that you know that as much as it's okay to be positive, it's okay to be grieving, and sometimes grieving what you never had or what you lost or or whatever like for my boyfriend it's a different type of grieving because he's grieving the fact that we will never have a family or it might never happen and I'm grieving the fact that we're never gonna I'm never be gonna be able to give him a family and the more and more we're going to this journey the more I think about my son so you know it's a different type of grief but it's still grieving so I feel like it's really important, you know, that there's going to be a roller coaster all your life. Infertility doesn't stop just because you're on a break. Infertility doesn't stop affecting you because you're trying to be positive. It's part of you. It doesn't define you, but it's, it's part of every day. And there's nothing else to do about it except when you have a bad day or a like a really dark blues well you gotta try to fail, find a way to grab onto hope and it was hard and I realized that as much as I want to be positive every day all the time it's impossible it is impossible and I want to make sure that you know that it's all right all right don't don't feel the pressure to be positive all the time like I did I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to be always positive, always happy. And at the end of the day, I didn't realize that it was okay to be mad sometimes, okay to be sad sometimes. And it's going to be part of my life, all my life. Because grieving doesn't just stop. It just becomes a different scarring. Like, it, it's a scar for life. It, it evolves eventually, but... You never forget that scar, you know? So I'm just going to keep praying for you guys. We're going to break. Uh, I still think about it. It's hard. But I'm still praying for you guys because I wish and I wish that we had that lucky day eventually. I don't know when. It's been six years now. Maybe a little bit more. I stop counting because it, it becomes discouraging sometimes. But anyways, I wish you the best. Bye-bye. Baby dust.